So we're going to review a little bit from what we learned yesterday. And Pasha Sveika, 1992 Sikha of Rebbe, where he says, how do, the, he quotes the, the verse that says, um, Kum Hashem, Yafutsu Yivecha, V'yanusu Masanecha Mipanecha. Um, V'yomar Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu said this verse, and he said, Hashem is being uplifted, and all your enemies will run before you, right? Scatter and run away from you. So what is this getting up? The getting up is said for when the tabernacle was being moved, the Aron Kodesh. Um, and we say this verse now when the Sefer Torah is being moved out of the Ark into the congregation, right? We open up this, the Ark, we take out the Sefer Torah. It's an auspicious moment. We're told to, to, for, for, to pray for those in need. And it's also um, an auspicious time for remembering that Hashem is protecting us and uh, our enemies will scatter and disperse. So we say the verse, Ki mitzion tetzei Torah from Zion, Torah will come out. The Rosh Hashem ways to say, Kum Hashem, stand up Hashem, be'efutsu, and all the, your enemies will scatter and run from before you. So that was yesterday. So there is something in Torah, the power of Torah, being uh, uplifting Hashem's um, uh, holiness in the world, and those who try to oppose holiness fear it. I have fear. Okay, so there, let's go into the Sikha back. We did three paragraphs of the Dalit. Okay, so. This whole discussion started about, you know, taking out Sefer Torahs. What's the significance of taking out a Sefer Torah? Because in that year, 1991, when the Rebbe said the Sikha, they were taking out that Shabbos, three Sefer Torahs. Um, and three, there's something special about three. And the Rebbe says in three, in general, what's special about three? One is, Chazaka shetzecha liyot veyishna be'obadat midit bosho v'chol shana v'shana, k'tmidin kezunam, tzad shosha Sefer Torah v'simcha Torah. There's the usual power of that we have every year every year we increase in our you know in our in our spiritual strength right we we add on to last year and the year before right we're adding an additional strength but every year we have the the the, the ongoing three on Simchas Torah Simchas Torah we always take out three Sefer Torahs no matter what it, it, and no matter when it uh, what day of the week it falls it doesn't matter if it's Shabbos weekday we always take out three Sefer Torahs which we explained yesterday is one to finish reading the whole five uh, uh, books of, of the Torah, one to begin anew, right? In order to not give a place for people to say or for any 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 negative distinct, uh, statement from anywhere that, God forbid, we finish the Torah and we don't want to immediately start anew. And then the third Sefer Torah is the Matthew. So every year we have this aspect of three Sefer Torahs being taken out, for sure, on Simchas Torah. Which, yeah. Now, bet, chazaka shabab elfen shalosafa. There's chazaka. Chazaka means when there's three, it's called a chazaka. It's a reinforcement of three. And this comes in a way of adding. Musafim kil chasam. The shanim sheesh ben kliyot mechadet in years where there's something special going on, like in that year that they're saying, in our year 1991, they're taking out three sacred Torahs, an rosh chodesh nisan, that comes out on the Shabbos. As we explained yesterday, there's three different portions to be read from different Sefer Torahs. The difference between them is according to the content of what's being read in the three Sefer Torahs. What's the content? Um, in that year, the 1991 year, when they took out three Sefer Torahs in the month of Nisan, the Rosh Chodesh Nisan came out on Shabbos. So the specialty of that, the novelty of that once in a year reading was that not not that the very special, uh, the, the most special reading was the third reading, which is we read Parsha Sachodesh, which is speaking about the specialty of Rosh Chodesh Nisan specifically, not just any Rosh Chodesh that comes out on Shabbos, but the Rosh Chodesh Nisan 
because Nisan is the first month, it's the first month of the year that was um, given to us in time of, right? In, in the time. Shem commanded us the first mitzvah was to make Nisan the first month of the year. The reading of the three books on Simchas the main thing that we're right is more special, most special in that reading on Simchas is the second book. Why? Because we're restarting to the Breshis over again. So that's the, the the very exciting part that we're starting to read Breshis anew. First, first, right away. First thing that year is on Simchas We're reading Breshis. And okay, so there's even though like there's something exalted about finishing the whole Sefer Torah, that's the bar, that that's what we do in the first Sefer Torah, and there's something about the sacrifices that's very special. But still, the most exciting part is that we're restarting the whole Torah. Uh, anew, we 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 finish the, as soon as we finish, we're starting right away again. Okay, then we see how Hashem created the world. Now, in the words of the rabbis, Shuba b'chad kulsha shiur la Torah la yatzuf la tchil la Torah el ma chodesh azalachem shi mitzvah rishna shenitzavu beisra umatam betach bebrishit. And the rabbis quoting the, the saying of the rabbis, and Rashi brings us on the, his commentary on the Torah that the Torah really should have, it seems, should have started. With this, what we read, they were reading that Shabbos, Pasha Sachodesh, Achodesh Azalachem, Mosh Chodeshim, this month, Mosh Chodesh Nisan, this month should be the first month of the year. And that was the, the commandment was given in the desert, in the in Egypt, but that to sanctify the month of Nisan as the first month of the year. So the question, and that was the first mitzvah that was given to the Jewish people. So the question is, why? This, did the Torah start there with the first mitzvah, the first commandment? Why did the Torah start with the Reishis Baralakim? Hashem created the world, which we read on Simchas Torah. I know Shakya the Simchas Torah opened the Patach Bebreishit. Shakya the Shabbat Torah Chodesh Nisan he Ma Chodesh Azalachem Mitzvah Rishna Shem Mitzvah Breisel. So there, what we see the reading of Simchas Torah is opening up with Breishis Hashem created the world and the Rosh Chodesh uh, Nisan. Which is the Shabbos of Rosh Chodesh Nisan, where we read the three books, is starting with the first mitzvah that the Jewish people start, uh, were given in in Mitzrayim. Okay, So what's the the Rebbe is giving an answer? Why, 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 why didn't we start with the first mitzvah? Um, Beautiful. And, we could say hi, welcome for mom. Something's really important. And uh, do you know that today is mitzvah's birthday? One second. Um, good morning. Okay, welcome. Okay, so what's the answer? What's the difference between the reading on the, the Parsha Chodesh, the Rosh Chodesh Nisan, about the first mitzvah of, of sanctifying the first month of Nisan, to the reading, what's the difference between that and the reading of Simchas Torah? Which is the creation of the world? Who alderachu b'dugmat achiluk shabem Nisan letishrei? It's similar to the difference in general between the month of Nisan, right, and the month of Tishrei, which is the month where we have Simchas Torah. Kaidu asha Tishrei nena nagativit. We know that Tishrei. What's the what 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 is the aspect of of, of Tishrei? We know that it's Hashem how Hashem works in the world in the laws. And order of nature. Like we say, Hashem started with the creation of the world. Now, Nisan, its aspect is how Hashem works in the world in the way of miracles. And Hagan Nisit, he functions and it, uh, drives the world in a miraculous way. So, which is the order, which is the order of where, how Hashem created the world for the Yidden. And for the Torah. Until we ask the question, why do we open with the creation of the world? You should have started the Torah from the right, the first mitzvah of sanctifying the, the moon and the sanctifying the first month. That was the first mitzvah that we were commanded. Why? Because the Jewish people's 
Hanhaga, the, the way Hashem deals with us, is a way of miracles. As the rabbis say, this month is for you, to you, Lachem. When Hashem chose Yaakov and his children and his sons, he established the Rosh of Geula, of miracles, which would be miraculous, right? Geula, it's like a redemption, even from the way the order of the world as it is in natural order of Teva, of nature. Graduating, to, it's a Geula into Hashem ruling and running the world in a way of miraculous miracles, miraculous way. So so basically, um, it's like um, we're going from the natural order of things, which was how Hashem created the world, right? And with, with nature, Hashem rules the world with nature, created the world in a way, in order of natural. And then we're elevated later on to Hashem um, treating us and taking care of us with miracles like he did in Mitzrayim. And he gave us, and that happened after he gave us the first mitzvah of sanctifying the, the first month. Okay, he made us have this, this mitzvah of, the, uh, right, the Chodesh HaZelachem, this month is for you. And when did he give us this mitzvah? After he chose us, he chose the Jewish people specifically and the children of Yaakov, Yaakov and his ch ch children. Then Hashem established a month of Geula, a month of redemption, which is a month of Hashem performing miracles and dealing with us in a miraculous way. Okay, so is that is that clear so far? There's one more paragraph for, for this uh, part. So now this says, this understanding can explain why there's two ways of taking Sefer Torah is that one in Simchas Torah is in one way, and one is in the month of Nisan in another way. Right? When we botat shlosha sifre Torah b'simcha Torah naaset achazaka al kolalu to avoda al piseda ragil midim kesida avoda ba'ofen shel hanagat tivit botat shlosha sifre Torah b'shabbat rosh chodesh Nisan naaset chazaka al kolalu to avoda ba'ofen shel osafa al derech piseda ragil musafim kil chatam avoda ba'ofen shel hanagat nisim. So the chazaka that we have of the three sefer Torahs coming out in the month of Tishrei. The month where we read of how Hashem created the world, and we're talking about um, how Hashem rules, uh, runs the world in the order of the laws of nature. That gives us a chazaka, the, taking out the sefer, three sefer Torahs, which we said three is chazaka, three is a strength. It's a, a right. It's a very strong, powerful, potent um, energy that's being given, and that's being given in in Hashem ruling the world according to the laws of nature. And on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, when we read the, Sefer, the three Sefer Torahs, it's Hashem giving us a chazaka, three Sefer Torahs, which is the strength to, to, and the power to uh, be dealt with Hashem in the way of above nature, in the way of uh, miracles. Okay? And Hagani uh, Sit, it's called. So it's an avoda uh, which is beyond the normal way of doing things, right? Hosafa. In addition to the way of normally doing things, that we have another additional chazaka, which is the the uh, the way of Hashem dealing with the world in a way of miracles. Okay, so that's what we bring about in Rosh Chodesh Nisan, above and beyond with the three sefer Torahs above and beyond what we do on Simchas Torah. So if you want to translate a little bit in our mind, okay, Simchas Torah, we had what we had. And then I'm sure there were, aside from the tragedies, there were, you know, um, whatever, you know, um, I don't want to get into that, but we had a very uh, a difficult time. Hashem gave us whatever strength we had to do with it at the time. And, but that was within the rules of nature. Now we can expect that Rosh Chodesh Nisan, which is coming up in a little over two weeks, Hashem should give us miracles beyond nature. Okay, so that's the month of Nisan. Nisan is a month of miracles. So of course we, we should be looking for miracles now too, right? We still have the the power from from last year's the uh, you know Nisan still taking effect, but we should get an additional measure of miracles 
for sure, starting Rosh Chodesh Nisan, the month of miracles that we were given when Hashem chose us as his nation. I have a question. Yeah. So each of these is for all years. So all years, all the year, I mean, we have both nature and miracles. Yes. And then we have an extra um, power on the ho on the uh, on the holidays, and so how long does this extra power last? Oh, is it that so, it's the same extra all year? Every so year? all year, yes, yes. That was said for all year, and then also we build on it from year to year. It's not it doesn't okay, mean it escape and go away. That's well, what I thought. Okay. That power to propel us to next year's higher level of. of very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, So we finished paragraph four. Let's go uh, paragraph three or four. Which one do we live with? Paragraph. Where do we finish? We finished four. Hey, the Yesh Levar. Now that everyone wants to explain something more, but put it more in detail. It's talking about the wording when it says the first mitzvah that was given to the Jewish people was the mitzvah of sanctifying the month of, of Nisan, right? The first month, sanctifying the making of Rosh Chodesh, right? The, making the, the month start at the, the beginning of the month, Rosh Chodesh. So it's called the mitzvah, the first mitzvah. It's not called the first, it's not called the Torah, the first Torah that was given to us, the first teaching. It's called the first mitzvah commandment that was given to us. So we know the difference between Torah teaching and mitzvah command. Torah is above the world, right? It was before creation of the world. It's not part, wasn't created when the world was created. Torah preceded the world. Whereas a mitzvah is Hashem made commandments of how we should act within the world. In order so that we, man, can connect the world with Hashem. We, man, and the world are connecting with Hashem. So this is a very important axiom, okay? What is a mitzvah? Somebody asks you, what is a mitzvah? On a deeper level, according to how the Rebbe explains it, a mitzvah is a commandment to man how to behave within the world, in order that we should have the connection, chibu is connection, mitzvah is from the word connection, sabta, of connecting what? Adam ve'olam, man and the world, ima kadosh with Hashem. Okay? So if you want a clear definition, say, what's a mitzvah? I'll repeat it again. Mitzvah is a commandment to a person how to behave Ba'olam, within the world, okay? In order that there should be a connection between the man and the world with Hashem. Okay? So this, we understand when it says this month, this month will be, you know, the mitzvah of sanctifying the month. It's That was the first mitzvah. So <laughs> So this is an important thing, okay, also an important teaching. Pay attention, please. Let's take this in. What, um, and, and, um, and we said, right, and some Torah, it's Hashem, we were getting strength in re revealing Hashem as he rules the world according to the laws of nature. Okay? Now, and we said that on Nisan, right, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, we get the first mitzvah, the first uh, mitzvah and is, is 
Nisan itself is a month of miracles. The mitzvah is trying to bring the miracles in the world. Because the mitzvah, we said, we do within the world. So what the Rebbe's Chiddush here is, is what's happening on Rosh Nisan. The message is we're able to bring miracles into the world. Okay? Okay, so it's not just miracles or things are being drawn above the world. Like on Simchas Torah, the main thing is Torah. Torah is something that's on its own really above the world, not necessarily being witnessed and revealed within the world so so clearly. Whereas a mitzvah, when you're doing a mitzvah, you're doing it with your physical body in the physical world. And when we're doing it on, uh, on Nisan, we're bringing Hashem's miraculous um, way of dealing with the world into the world. So the mitzvah of, of sanctifying the moon and sanctifying the month and the Shchodesh Nisan, the Rebbe says, symbolizes how we can bring miracles into this world, into the physical world, through our through keeping mitzvahs, okay? In actuality, with physical things in this world, okay? And with, we're, we're, we're ne, nes, miracle is also from the word nas, and nes lit noses, nes, means to raise up. So what does it mean? That we're able in our service of Hashem to raise ourselves up beyond our natural inclination and instincts and abilities, okay? Our natural habits. So that's when we're talking about Hashem making miracles, we're talking about also us being able to deal with ourselves in a miraculous way, meaning we're elevated to being able to act beyond our nature and our natural instincts, our natural habits. So this Indian, who bad Gashayta Bishabat Moshkhadesh Nisan, if this is emphasized in the Shabbos when it comes out on Moshkhadesh Nisan, like that year, where it says, and it's the year of our Enoniflo, so it was Tafshin on Aleph, and the Rebbe said we can read the acronym of the year, the year that will show Hashem will show us wonders. Okay. That year, the Rebbe says, the normal aspect of the year is to have miracles, Niflos, wonders. Which is even wonders are even beyond this and beyond miracles. So that's, what does it mean? The Shabbos of Rosh Chodesh Nisan, Hashem is giving us extra strength. But open shall Chazakana way of three. Chazaka is three by taking out three sacred Torahs. To for what? La open shall to be able to act in a way of a miraculous way, a higher way. Even more than the miraculous way of action in the world that we have every year when uh, on any Rosh Chodesh Nisan. So when it comes out Rosh Chodesh Nisan on Shabbos, there's even extra, extra power energy for it being um, revealing Hashem in a miraculous way in the world. Okay? So, which we said... We're building on that and it applies every year. It's not just that year, 1991. Once it's revealed, we have this ability to reveal Hashem in a high miraculous way, Hashem within our activities within the world, more than we did the years before. So we have, if we think, you know, that we're a very dark generation or dark, dark world, which we are in a very dark world, we, but we have the power of all of these revelations that were given in all the years before us. Uh, on all the miracles, and we're building on those miracles to be able to draw down even more miracles, okay, and reveal Hashem's way of, in the world in a miraculous way. We have millions of stories of miracles. We have millions of of um, uh, of, of things to draw on the, the energy of all the people before us, and all the the mysterious nefesh, and all the things that everybody did. And we didn't we didn't mention because I rushed in and I was late today. That this right, this class is dedicated in our, our Torah to feel and tzedakah that we did, but tzedakah, the prayer and the learning is all for the soldiers to be successful, the hostages to be released, the wounded to be healed, and everybody, whatever they need, any health, healing, physically, spiritually, should all have uh, miracles in our healing. Amen, and, amen. World peace too. Yes, and ladies, if if you need to go and you want me to stop, I can stop here. And we can finish, um, we have two more days. We probably can finish this in two days because it's late. So if you want me to stop, I can stop. If you want me to continue, I can continue a little bit more. When Welcome, Enosa. You can continue because remember you wanted to also learn from 
Uh, the Rambam. So let's do the Rambam now, okay? I think we got a powerful point over here about drawing down miracles, okay? And then, um, okay, the Rabbi talks more about miracles tomorrow. We'll do more about miracles, miracles, miracles. He goes into that more. Amen, we should okay. see the miracles above miracles. Body. Yeah, and in an eternal way, the Rabbi really Rambam. to focus on miracles. Okay, so let's do a little bit of Rambam. Um, I didn't prepare, so but you said just like one little snippet. Okay. I think this is. Okay. Let's just read something. It, it could be I already read this before, but it's about the building of the base of Mikdash, right? It, whether it takes place before or after the ingathering of the Jewish people. So let's review one, one thing. The Rebbe says the advantage of in gathering the Jewish people from the exiles is higher than even the advantage of having the third base of Mikdash. And therefore, the Geula, which is the gathering of the Jewish people, will be after the building of the base of Mikdash. Okay? So first we build the base of Mikdash, we get to a higher level, and then we get to an even higher level, uh, and the ingathering takes place. But this advantage of being able to have the gathering takes place through the third base of Mikdash being given to us. So the third base of Mikdash is going to have a very high level of revelation and it will bring us to the ability to have also gathering. That's one of the reasons why the first thing that Mashiach will do after he'll be the Cheskas Mashiach who binyan Beis HaMikdash is to build the Beis HaMikdash because it's the source, the Shoresh for everything that will come afterwards. So what's this do to us with our work here now, Achshav now, Baruch News, spiritually? And which the Rebbe writes in parentheses, through us doing things spiritually, things happen and take place physically. Okay, so what's the spiritual of what that we need to do that will manifest these things physically in the world? We have to learn an opinion from both. We have to learn a, uh, an instruction from both opinions, whether the Beis HaMikdash will be first or the gathering of the Jews will be first. And what's the explanation? What's the meaning of the advantage and the mile and the concept of the Beis HaMikdash? The Beis HaMikdash shows us and is the epitome of elevating the physical, elevating physical things. We use physical things to build the Beis HaMikdash and to bring, you know, the do the avoid on the Beis HaMikdash. It's all physical. So we make the physical in a, in a, into a Mikdash for Hashem. That's why there's an opinion that you cannot build the base of Mikdash until you have the gathering of all the Jews. That first they need all the Jewish people to come out of exile. And only after that they can come to this high level of that also the physical things will be dwelling place for Hashem. That's that one opinion, which we're asked. The other opinion is that through our deeds, our deeds now, our first job is at the beginning is to gather all the holy sparks of all the Jewish people that were um, um, dispersed around the world. And only afterwards, and only after that, we can actually affect the world and elevate the world that's outside. <clears throat> Which is which is, which is uh, signified in the base of Mikdash. Meaning, according to that opinion, we first have to gather all the souls, and then we can build the base of Mikdash. That opinion is, is until you're perfect, until you fix yourself, you can't go and really affect and change the world, not things that are outside of you. So what's the instruction from the opinion but first we build the base of Mikdash and then we gather the people, the second opinion, that even though normally you're supposed to deal with yourself first, 
make yourself uh, perfect, right? Work on yourself, make yourself beautiful. We were talking about spiritually. And then afterwards, you can go decorate or take deal with other people. And still, there's a matzav mechad. There's sometimes a special, there's spe something special needs to be done, a special situation. That we first build the base of mikdash, and then we gather all the sparks. If by divine providence something comes to you that needs to be fixed in the world, right? This is a, a, a proof that you have to deal with it. This fix this part of the world. Even though you're not perfect yourself, you're not on the high level. Okay? The Pulazo, meaning the says, don't wait till you're a big tzaddik to fix the thing. <laughs> you don't have time for that. This activity of fixing the world around you, which is um, synonymous with building the base of Mikdash spiritually, fixing the world is right, making the world a dwelling place for Hashem, is the spiritual um, um, thing that brings about the building of the base of Mikdash, right? He said, What's our Vada? Spiritual brings physical, spiritually working on the world to elevate the world, deal with the world. That's the building of the base of Mikdash spiritually. That brings us, when we do that, that gives us extra krach, extra power, but on our service, with ourselves, to be able to have the kibbutz galios like we had in, the, in this moshi shehaya, just like it was in the building of the second base of Mikdash. That they built the base of Mikdash and um, uh, that they were able to work on in gathering all the people, I guess. I'm not sure which came first, the second, the second base of Mikdash. But yeah, yeah. First they built, well, they had to have people come in, right? With yeah. Ezra. Yeah. But so they, they were all on a low, they were not on a higher level and they were married to non-Jews. So I guess they built some the Beit HaMikdash and then probably more people joined in, right? I'm not sure exactly so, what was, uh, if they're ever saying but, that, which one first or second. But what they're ever saying, maybe he's saying, yeah, that they first built the base of Mikdash and then they gathered everybody. We'll take anything, okay? Yeah, anything. We'll take it all. But they're ever saying is that don't basically, yes, uh, the normal way of things is you don't work normally, first work on yourself and then help others. Never says in our times, no, if something comes to you to fix the world, um, first fix something in the world and then fix yourself, which is the spiritually is the gathering of the sparks. So, um, so both 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 opinions take hold. We don't have to be one or the other. We we can do both. Okay, so the random holds, right? You first have the building the base of Mikdash and afterwards the gathering. So too, when it comes to our service of Hashem in our generation, the simple, the instruction is by the Fidik Rebbe, that first we have to build the base of Mikdash and then do the Kibbutz Kalios, which means we have first have to deal with the world, fixing the world, and then we will uh, that will give us strength to also elevate ourselves and be better people okay so right so the Rebbe says we have to we have to deal with the world elevate the world without waiting that we will first fix ourselves wholly and fully and that's the way of most people and the way most people in this world now have to deal aside from very very few people the Rebbe says very 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 few people that are very um handpicked maybe that it's required of them to first to be perfect. <laughs> There's only a very few people in the world that ever says that we, they have must be perfect before they can uh, take care of the world and elevate the world. So, the, so the Rebbe's opinion is first build the base of English and then you have the in gathering. Yes, which means first deal with the world and elevate the world, influence the world, do dear betachtanim, bring godliness into the physical world wherever we can, wherever we're by divine providence we are. And things come to us to do and take action, and afterwards, we that will help us be higher, more elevated spiritual people. Okay. But so all these people that think that you have to get up and leave and go to Israel, so the rabbi says first build the base of Migdash and then work on the you know so that's but so they can they can stay everything. where they are for now. Pardon? Yeah, work on fixing the world. It's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It, it, it's not right spiritually we all want to be in this high level and we already want to be perfect and we want to think of ourselves but they're ever saying think about the world think about the world around you and your effect on the world make sure you're changing and elevating the world that's the most important thing dwelling place for Hashem in this world okay so 
you know what? There's no argument because it could be either way, right? If it works this way, it works that way. It's well, that it, way does, it's well, that, it does say there are very special souls, very special people that do get to worry about themselves first and elevate themselves and be perfect before they uh, they they need to deal with the world. But the, most people need to to elevate, do mitzvahs in the world, elevate the world. I don't know what I'm saying is like some people say, well, first you have to do this and then you do that. And first you have. So according to the Rebbe, it can be either one. It's just, it well, doesn't the, matter. You just Rebbe, get it done. The Rebbe is emphasizing: don't wait till you're perfect. Don't wait till you're you're spiritually on this high level. Go right. And also, he said, don't wait until the in gathering. Also, right. That's the in gathering. The in gathering is is making ourselves uh, high and holy and perfect. That's what the the the, right? the, the building of the Mesa makes us spiritual means to change the world, elevate the world. The in gathering spiritual it means that we're making ourselves perfect. So we're not. Isn't that wonderful? We're not expected to be perfect. Yeah, <laughs> that's not the that's not our focus. And by dealing with the world, elevating the world, it will give us strength to be able to have the in gathering to be perfect to. Elevate ourselves and every all the all the Jews to a place where we'll all be together in Israel. Okay, in uh, the third base of Mikdash, celebrating. But I guess we need the base of Mikdash also to and gather everybody into it. So, but the, spiritually that means fixing uh, and being productive and drawing Hashem down to be revealed in this physical world wherever we are, and as far as we can reach in the world to the furthest corners of the earth. Okay. So let's do our psukim, and then if you want to ask or say something while you could, it's already almost nine. Okay. Torah tziva lanu Moshe, Moshe kilas Yaakov. Shema Yisrael Adonai, Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Bechol dov adol chayav adam neosos atzmo, ki ilu hu yatsa hayom mimitzayim. Kol yisrael yesh lehem chelek lolam abba, shneim avam mechkulam tzadikim, ma'olam yeshu aritz. Netzel matay maase edai lispar. Ki kol velechad avam me'od, bifichol bilbav chala soisa. והנה השם ניצב עליו ומלא קולות כבודו מביט עליו ובוחן חלויוס ולב עם עובדו כאוי. ויש אספר אלוקים עשה שמיים ועשה ארץ ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם ושיבך בביסך ובלך לך בדרך ושוך בך ובפומך יגעתי ולא מצא שיער פעמים לא יגעתי ומצא שיער פעמים יגעתי ומצא שיער פעמים ואהבת לאחר כמוך רבי עקיבא אומר זה כלל גדול בתורה וזה כל אדם עשה חליס בעשר ואז כל העולם עשו עניינים מתחתנים ואז לא יתברך דיר עשו תחתוני, מסמך ישראל ועושה פה שכל מי שהוא מזה ישראל, יש לו לסמך בשמחה זה השם אשר שש ושמח בדיר עשה בתחתוני. יחי אדוננו, מורנו ורבנו, מלך המשיח לעולם ועד. Ladies, we should dance to Geula, let's get the tambourine. Yes. Amen. 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 Usher in miracles. Amen. Miracles above miracles. Hopefully we did our mitzvahs where we are now and we can be 